we address a bombshell New York Times report on how Planned Parenthood allegedly discriminates against pregnant employees. The paper reported that more than a dozen current and former employees of the nation's largest abortion provider accused the organization of mistreating and ousting pregnant staff. The women featured in the article said Planned Parenthood managers in some facilities declined to hire pregnant job candidates, refused requests for breaks for expecting mothers, tried to pressure new moms to return from maternity leave too early, and in some instances fired them after they gave birth. Joining us now is Talisa Hairston, a woman who is prominently featured in the New York Times article. We're speaking to her via Skype from New Haven, Connecticut for her first television interview. Talisa, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. First of all, can you tell us about your pregnancy journey for your youngest son and any complications that you had? Yes. Yeah, so. In the end of my pregnancy, I actually developed preeclampsia, and it's a condition where your blood pressure reaches a really high limit. There's swelling in your feet, hands, and face. And it was so bad that I was put on bed rest multiple times until March 23rd. I was actually admitted to the hospital where I had to stay until my due date, which was April 30th. And then they performed an emergency C-section the next day because they said my liver was going to rupture and I would die. Oh my goodness. I'm glad that you and your son are healthy now. And Talisa, you told the New York Times that Planned Parenthood required you to work a longer day, which went against your doctor's orders. Can you tell us about that and what happened because of that? Yes, um, so I worked a lot of long shifts at Planned Parenthood and the last one I worked was actually a 10 hour shift. I worked an eight to eight and it did snow that night. It was really bad. And the next day, the Monday I came into work and the nurse said, you have to go home. And she said, I don't care who gets mad, like you have to leave. I went to the doctor and then they put me on bed rest. And they said, this is really bad. Like, you have to think about your pregnancy. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what they say at work anymore. Like, that's it. Mm -hmm. And that's when everything just kind of spiraled out of control. What would happen to Lisa when you would ask for lunch breaks? I wouldn't get one. Or if I did go on lunch, I was pulled out of the lunch room to see patients. When you did have your son, Talisa, did Planned Parenthood respect your earned maternity leave? How did they treat you during that time? In the beginning, they were very kind. And then as a week passed, they said that they did not receive notice from my doctor that I did deliver the baby. They didn't have my FMLA paperwork. And I told them that my doctor had sent it a week two weeks before when I was placed on immediate bed rest. And then shortly after I was getting calls stating that I had to come back to work. And my son had just came home from the NICU. He hadn't even been a month old. Mm. And I know with FMLA, like I can stay home for up to three months, it's 12 weeks if you have a C-section. And it wasn't even the 12 weeks yet. And they were telling me that I had to return to work I did let them know that I was not notified through mail with a letter stating I had to return to work and how I, how was I supposed to know these things and it's a week later that I have to go to work. Sounds like you were really on top of it in all the paperwork and following protocol. Yes. So to clarify, Talisa, how did your employment at Planned Parenthood come to an end? It came to an end when I requested for paid family leave. It's a leave that started last, well, last January, and it's for bonding with newborns where you can get extra time off and it mm -hmm. is paid. I requested that and two of the women from HR said that I was not eligible for it. I can either do one week unpaid leave, 30 days, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. one week of PTO, 30 days unpaid leave or tenure my resignation. And with all of the stress that I felt, and it's actually making me tear up now, mm -hmm. with all of the stress that I felt, mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. felt that it was best to just leave because the way I was treated throughout my whole pregnancy and maternity leave, I couldn't enjoy my son 
or get myself better again to take care of him. As I mentioned, Talisa, you were prominently featured in, the, in that New York Times article. What was it like working with those reporters for the piece? They were awesome. They mm -hmm. supported me throughout the entire process. They actually cried a few times when I let them know my story because I still get emotional off of it. So I can imagine anyone that didn't go through it, it kind of, it touches them in a place as well. And one of the reporters were, she was actually pregnant mm -hmm. and she said she couldn't imagine if this were to happen to her as well. And I told her, hopefully, this never happens to anybody. So finally, Talisa, again, thank you for your time. And hearing about this experience, I just want to end it in asking you, if there's anyone who might be considering a career at Planned Parenthood, what would you want to tell that woman? I would tell them to think twice and know exactly what you're getting yourself into. And I would tell them just turn the other way. There's better opportunities out there. I work for a great, a great place now and mm -hmm. I'm respected. Mm -hmm. And that's what's very important because if you're going to give healthcare, I feel like if something happened to one of us, it should be back in return. And people should respect us. Talisa Hairston, thank you for your courage and sharing your story and thank you for taking time to speak with us today. Thank you. We did reach out to Planned Parenthood for comment on this investigation. Planned Parenthood responded by directing us to their press release from their president, Dr. Leanna Wen, stating in part, as a doctor, a public health leader, and a mother, I am deeply disappointed by a recent New York Times article that included allegations about our organization not living up to our high standards and policies. For confidentiality reasons, we cannot comment on specific allegations. But make no mistake, if concerns are raised or complaints brought, we investigate immediately and, where necessary, take decisive action. Dr. Wen's statement also included news that the abortion business is launching a major new initiative to, quote, review, revamp, and strengthen parental leave policies to, quote, ensure a culture that supports pregnant and parenting staff. To continue this conversation, we are joined in studio by Mallory Quigley, the Vice President of Communications for the Susan B. Anthony List. And joining us via satellite is Annette Lancaster, who used to manage a Planned Parenthood facility, but is now a part of And Then There Were None, a nonprofit that exists to help abortion clinic workers leave the abortion industry. Thank you both for being here with us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Mallory, first off, what is your reaction to this investigation and to what Talisa shared with us? Gosh, well, wow. And thank God that Talisa is in good health and her mm -hmm. son is as well. Uh, it's really no surprise when you think about the pressure that Planned Parenthood exerts on the pregnant women that come into their doors. I mean, mm -hmm. nine out of ten women who are pregnant walk out of Planned Parenthood having been undergone or sold an abortion. Mm. And so it really, it makes sense and it's not really a surprise that they would exert this level of pressure on their employees as well and to create an environment that isn't just hostile to the unborn child but to the mother. I mean preeclampsia is a very serious condition for pregnant women and um, you know for an organization whose motto is health care no matter what, I mean I think that this investigation uh, directly contradicts that as we know. And Annette, I understand you spoke with the New York Times at length for this report. What did you share with the reporters? How was the culture at Planned Parenthood? Um, well, the culture was very dark. Um, one of the things that I spoke out about was that they were um, very uh, biased towards our pregnant employees. Um, I actually had a pregnant staff member um, who was terminated mm. and um, then later on I left and went out of the country for vacation and when I came back one of our senior members of man management um, ended up being terminated and to me it was very ironic that she had been speaking out about her pregnancy um, and then when I come back she was automatically just gone and I was told to have no communication with her so you know like I said to the New York Times if it was one time it would have been coincidence but that the fact that it happened twice uh, mm -hmm. was very curious to me. Mm -hmm. 
Mallory, what did you make of how Planned Parenthood President Dr. Leanna Wen responded? Well, I mean, it's more of the same. You know, she came in um, trying to focus on health care. You know, she is coming from a medical background, less political than her predecessor. Uh, but I think that this, this is just a continuation of the status quo at Planned Parenthood, which is proving itself time and again to be an abortion business. And that it sounds as if you did, in fact, witness your pregnant coworkers being discriminated against. What else do you want to share that you think Americans would be surprised to learn about how Planned Parenthood treats pregnant employees? Oh, there is so, there is so much that goes on behind the scenes that the um, American population just does not know. Um, they do not provide health care, they do, they do not provide um, maternity leave, they do not provide anything for mm -hmm. the pregnant um, employees. Um, one of the things that Planned Parenthood stresses is not taking time off, although they do offer it, um, and I guess that's because it's, you know, legally obligatory, mm -hmm. but um, they do not allow a lot of taking of time off to go to doctor's appointments and things of that nature. So when you're pregnant, you're definitely going to need to take a lot of time off. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one of the reasons that was behind those two employees being suddenly terminated. Mallory, do you see this New York Times report having any repercussions for Planned Parenthood? I certainly hope so. I mean, it's more it's more fuel to the fire um, you know, on top of, you know, their annual reports and other information, the, mm -hmm. the witness of, of former Planned Parenthood employees like Annette and, and Talisa. And I think that, you know, <laughs> the timing of this was really unfortunate. It came mm -hmm. right before the Christmas holiday when people are That's not right. paying as much attention. But this is something that we need to... Um, continue to point out and and the witness of of the women that are working with and then there were none is so incredible and so powerful so I hope that this will be, be a wake-up call to some people that are maybe still working inside the abortion industry and might get out after having this 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 report absolutely and Annette on that note finally if there is someone who works at Planned Parenthood who happens to catch this program what do you want to say to that person I I just want to beg and plead to those people, especially those that know me that still work at the Chapel Hill location. Um, you know the culture, you know the ambiance. Just get out. Um, you know, it's almost like the, that movie that just came out recently called Get Out. <laughs> like you, you get sucked into this dark culture and you end up culminating to that and you end up becoming part of it and you really can't see your way out, but I would just stress to them and beg to them, just really look beyond what you're doing and, you know, really see the truth of the matter and just get out. Thank you for your witness. Annette Lancaster of And Then There Were None and Mallory Quigley of the Susan B. Anthony List, thank you both for being with us. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you.